So th the next section, uh, he gets, uh, Deacon gets into the way in which uh, natural selection creates the information necessary for brain development. And this is a kind of natural selection that goes on within the brain. And so the, 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 the key here is that he wants to argue that the information that's contained in the brain, particularly information about language processing, is not contained in a kind of blueprint in the genetic information, but that the information that the brain uses to sort of organize itself develops in a kind of what he calls an inner evolutionary process, right? And so <coughs> the way he explains this is by, uh, by pointing out that the brain of any organism develops by initially producing many more neur neurons than it needs in all parts of its nervous system. And then in the course of the embryonic and fetal and sort of early development of that organism, neurons that aren't used are killed off. Right? And so th these neurons have to, in a sense, within the brain, they have to compete for survival uh, in order then to become part of the final brain structure. And then these selection pressures are the inputs to those neurons that determine whether they'll be later used. So neurons that aren't used in that early development will tend to die off, whereas the neurons that are used will, will survive later. So there, there's, a <coughs> there's a sense in which the, de the brain develops in a kind of generic way for all all organisms, and that the specific brain structures of a specific organism are really, they ad uh, they're adapted to that organism in the process of that organism's development, right? And so that th what, he, what he points out is that the brain develops in a way that's most efficient in the use of information, even though it wastes material in a sense, right? So it creates all of these neurons that are then killed off. So there's a kind of wastage of material, but it's very efficient in the use of information because, in fact, the, there, there's, there's, there doesn't need to be any kind of genetic blueprint for the structure of the brain. That structure of the brain then can be sort of created kind of on the fly as um, different neurons are, are activated by inputs or not activated, right? And so, um, you know, what he indicates then here is that the, the, the way in which the language structures might be developed in the brain doesn't have necessarily have to be pre-coded, pre and pro probably isn't, because there are so few things that are somehow, that are pre-programmed into the structure of the brain um, in, on the level of the neurons, right? So, in a sense then, the brains adapt to the body that they find themselves in this sort of inner evolutionary process, right? And, um, and so, brain cells in a sense, they're not specialized. They're, they're all, the, the, the neurons that you find in the brain are in fact all general neurons. And what, what they've done, and one, one of the pieces of evidence that he uses in order to indicate this is that <coughs> they've been able to transplant, you know, pig neurons into a rat's brain. And it's not as if those, those pig neurons all of a sudden don't function properly or don't function like pig neurons, but rather they, they're, they totally integrate themselves within the rat brain and carry out the functions as if they were rat neurons. So there's a, there's a kind of general purposeness uh, of the neurons of the brain that allows for this, um, you know, uh, development of, uh, of, of specific structures on the fly as it finds itself within each specific body. And so th this is the case not only for, you know, brain, you know, the neurons crossing different species, but also, you know, w when, when a brain develops in a particular animal that perhaps, you know, is born, you know, maybe without, you know, without hearing or without limbs, those neurons that normally would have been used for those limbs or for hearing for him are, are repurposed for other, for other uses. And so there's, there's a sense in which <coughs> even, you know, um, sort of deformations or sort of, you know, irregularities of a particular body cause uh, differences in the brain development of that organism, okay? So, um, what's, once we realize this sort of malleability of brain development, the other point then that Deacon wants to make is that there still is something very specific about human brains. And, <coughs> and the main thing is, that again, going back to the, the size of that prefrontal cortex, is that the human brain has relatively many neurons in the section of the brain in the front 
that don't have any direct connections to the outside world. So, um, <coughs> so what he's saying is that th they don't have any direct connections to, to sense information, and they don't have any direct connections to motor information, you know, um, you know moving your muscles and things, right? And so, the, so the, the brain as a whole then has more sort of inputs from internal systems than from external systems. And it changed the general way in which the brain functions. Right? So, <coughs> so one thing you know, that, he's, that he talks about in this sort of natural selection process of neurons within the brain is that the more inputs that a neuron gets from somewhere, th it's, it counts for sort of more votes in terms of what's going to affect the functioning of those neurons. And what he's, you know, what he's indicating here is that the brain structures that are tied to, you know, the outside world, right, where, where, the, where you've got neurons that are, you know, connected to your eyes or your ears or your, or your fingers that are receiving that sensory information, <coughs> those are, are kind of fixed. There's a certain a fixed number of neurons you need in order to manage those, those sensory and motor information processing needs, right? Um, but the, the set of neurons that, that the human brain has that other animals don't are these neurons that aren't connected to the outside world, but are connected from this prefrontal cortex back into those neurons that are connected to the outside world, right? So that <coughs> there are, there's a sense in which our information from the outside world and our reaction to the outside world is subject to this additional kind of voting or processing of neurons that aren't connected to the outside world. So there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a sense in which our relationship to the outside world is mediated by, that, by all of these neurons that are sitting inside the brain and are, are not connected to the outside. So there's, there's a kind of an additional level of processing that's going on within the brain that typically doesn't happen with, many, with, with most other species, right? So that <coughs> if you have species in which you know, t you know, one example he has is, is, is the mouse, right? So, so the mouse has actually a relatively large brain for its body size, right? Um, but what he's indicating here with the mouse is that many of the systems of the mouse, of the, of the mouse brain are such that the, the, the kind of inputs it gets and the reactions that it makes to those inputs are sort of automatically programmed in a sense, right? So that what's going on is that there's a, you know, there's these sensory inputs, there's a kind of automatic processing, and then there's sort of these, these, these sort of motor reactions that, that, the, that, the, that, the, that the mouse undertakes. And there's not an additional kind of thinking process that's going on in the mouse, but rather there's a kind of, there are more circuits for, for creating these kind of more automatic responses. And what he's indicating about the human brain is that that automaticity of response is being constrained by this, these extra neurons in the prefrontal cortex that, that provide this additional type of processing that, that involves itself within both the sensory inputs and the, the motor outputs, right? Um, so, well, okay, well, I'll just stop there and we can just...